Hi Virgos, I'm so excited to talk to you. Being a Virgo moon, I come back here and I can check in with a very real part of myself. And I wanna start off this discussion today with a little toast to you guys for this January 2019 discussion for this new year ahead. I wanna to toast to you guys and let you know that I love you. You guys are the funniest people. Thank you so much for your humor and your dry wit and your ability to put ideas together and go at lightning speed with me with ideas. That is such a gorgeous thing and I appreciate it so much. So cheers to you guys and all of your valuable, amazing insights. I love you guys. Okay, with that being said, put that down over there. January is intense. It's the real deal. We are working with some very powerful energies. And just as a collective, there's a lot going on. And by the way, if you're interested in year ahead readings, I did those. They're on Vimeo. So I'm going to leave the link below. Go check those out if you want that empowered overarching sense of the year, not only with planetary placements, but also intuitively. We, we, we do both. We spend a half hour together. We talk about the big things, and you can refer back to that throughout the year and see how it's helping you through. So go check that out if you're interested. And we're going to start this year off with a big conversation because January 2019 is what I'm calling a catalyst month. It works differently than 2018 did, right? 2018 has gotten the reputation of being the year of retrogrades, and it really was. Um, we were retrograding through a lot, including a Mars retrograde, which does not happen very often, a Venus retrograde shortly after, um, and that those change the game. Mars and Venus work are very personal, and they don't go retrograde as often as other planets do. So when they do, we feel it, right? And it was a year of integration. Now, 2019 is about go, go, go. What's true for you? What's true for you? Because you only want to take what's true for you as you're going. Because if it's a year of moving and building on stuff and catalysts and, and change and shift, you want to make sure, you want to make sure that what is coming with you is going to be working with you and that it's not going to sneak along and come in and and, you know, kind of slow you down or take you off track. Like, we don't want that, right? And so for you guys, Capricorn energy is really strong. We are in Capricorn season. The sun is going to be in Capricorn until the 20th. And we have Mercury moving into Cap Capricorn on the 5th. Saturn is hanging out in Capricorn all year. Uh, so you have all this energy working with you in your fifth house of creativity. And your heart, Virgos, your heart. And you will be noticing already in January, the note I have for you is that here's where you're checking in the first half of this month. I'm going to start shuffling. You guys feel the need sometimes, I think, the pressure to perform well, right? Like you want to do well at what you're working on and what you're, what you're doing in the world. You want to do well. And sometimes we have certain personalities where we decide they're going to be our gauge for how we're going to do things, right? Whether or not it's really what feels true for us or not. Seven of Wands and Strength came out. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. This month, this January, you are going to be looking at that and saying, I don't need to perform in a specific way for specific people in order to feel validated, right? Oh, the star in the Eight of Wands just popped up, you guys. That's so awesome. This is good. That Aquarius season is going to bring something good for you guys, I think. So is the Leo lunar eclipse that's happening on the 21st. It's the lo last lunar eclipse in Leo for a number of years. So that's going to be really powerful. We'll talk about it. But right, you know, that self-trust in what you create and what's powerful to you and what's what's fulfilling to you and feeling that freedom to express it fully without feeling you have to self-censor or pull yourself back or do it in a way that makes it okay for that person, right? Three of swords. Like I said, there's, there's a, there's this really strong thing of you can't bring with you in January what is not going to ride with you in power, in love, in connection, in flow for the rest of the year. 
If you bring it with you, it's not going to feel good. And that's really strong. So there are some dense energy showing up in these readings this month because it's like, you're going to face that? Are you going to keep, keep bringing that in or not? But, you know, you have all this fifth house energy of your heart and how you share of it. Capricorn season is very empowering for Virgos. And then we go into Aquarius season with this Leo lunar eclipse. Now, Leo lunar eclipse in your 12th house is checking in with your soul, checking in with that voice and that knowing and that receptivity and what that is and clearing the way for you so that you can move forward through life in a way that feels good and authentic for you. Six of cups. And that came out with the three of swords. So... We're going to have a little chat, Virgos. We're going to have a little chat about what is going on there because there's an electrical storm going on with what you're taking with you. There is an electrical storm coming in for what you're taking with you. And it's important to pay attention. I'm getting goosebumps like nobody's business right now. When I say this, I'm getting goosebumps. Knight of Pentacles. I'm waiting for two more cards. And then we're going to talk through this because this is Emperor. Whoa. You guys have some strong personalities around you this month. You're a strong personality this month. You've got some big questions that are being asked this month. Six of Wands. There you go. That's the outcome card. Six of Wands. Okay. <coughs> oh, look, the bottom of the deck is the Fool. How can you argue with that, you guys? Oh, that's some good stuff. Okay, there's big questions being asked here, you guys. And like I said, I kind of had that sense in the note. Then the cards came out. And then the more I talk to you, I'm like rubbing my head because... Ah, okay. Okay. What can come with you? What can be a part of this journey with you? What, what, what is that going to be? We start this month off in the Seven of Wands energy, which is a card of higher ground and success, right? You've made it somewhere, Virgo. You come into 2019 knowing you have grown. You've stepped into a much stronger role in your own life, and you know what that is, and you're proud of it. You've come a long way. But one of the things that's happening this first week we have Mars moving into Aries right away the first day of the year. Sun and Saturn are conjunct the second day of the year. Your ruling planet Mercury goes into Capricorn the fifth. New moon in Capricorn on the sixth. Uranus goes direct in Aries on the sixth as well. See where I'm going with all this? There's a lot happening. It's a catalyst week. You've made it far. You've made it out of this pit, right? But you're still kind of focused a little bit on what these other people are doing. And this is what January is about. This character needs to stop engaging with any of this. And that's what the next three cards are about. Yes. Yes, this is the Leo and Aquarian energy working with you. Um, which is really interesting, actually. Um, 12th and 6th house energies for you, right? When we hit Aquarius season on the 20th and we have that full Leo lunar eclipse on the 21st, something's going on there. It's taking you to the next level. That's going to be a very important moon for you because it's so spiritually based. Your neighboring sign like that, it does something with you that's very powerful. It's like when it's in your sign, it's one thing. But when it's in the sign right before yours, you're doing deep work there. You're, you're expanding vibrationally at that point. But strength and, and, and star, you can just look at these and see bounty, right? These are strong energies of self-worth, self-value, healing, and knowing, knowing your value, knowing it just inside of yourself. I think about the Angel Olsen song, um, White Fire. One of the lines in it is, burn no... Burn your fire for no witness. And I think one of the most empowered things I can think of with this is that you figure out how to burn your fire and love that fire and you don't care if there's a witness. You don't care. These two figures are divinely guided. They're connected to infinity, right? 
one as the celestial star seed and one as the embodied leader. Neither one of them forces their way into anything, right? They're kind of quietly communing with their natural surroundings. I keep hitting the camera. I'm so sorry. They're kind of quietly communing with their surroundings. They understand that they're flowing with it and that their power is in this quiet sovereignty. This quiet, powerful sovereignty of self-knowing. They're not looking for anybody else to come in and make it right or to get an answer from somebody. They are completely powerful. And the thing with this energy is that when it's held, when you hold still long enough and you hold this vibration long enough, people come to find you, opportunities come to find you, you don't have to lift a finger. And I know Virgo, that is not an easy thing for you guys because you like to move through the world. You like to do stuff. You like to get your hands in there and get busy. Let's do some stuff. Let's make some stuff. I love that about you guys. I love that you are willing to just dive in. We need you in the world. However, because that's your natural way, one of the lessons you are learning is how to hold that center point and quiet down a little bit. Check in a little bit. Hold your power a little bit. It'll take you far. You move from the seven of wands, where you're kind of focused on what other people are doing and how you can help and how you can get involved and how you can keep pushing, to eight of wands, where you're just riding along on the breeze. Now, yes, this is a new opportunity. This is a new landscape that you are being taken on. The eight of wands for me is an adventure. It's an energetic adventure. It is, you are no longer here. You are going here. You're on a magic carpet ride and it is taking you somewhere new. So it's sweeping you. It sweeps you forward. It sweeps you into the next lane. And that comes from holding this steady center point, right? This creative. It is creative. It's spiritually connected. It is cosmic. It is quiet. She's not unleashing that, leashing that dragon and she is not, she is not entertaining anyone, right? So this is your baseline. And I want you guys to return to that baseline throughout the month, all month long. And once again, pay attention to that full moon and that lunar eclipse because it's really powerful for you guys. And the reason you're going to need that baseline is, is what we're about to talk about. One of the things I'm noticing with January is, like I said, this checking in with what is really serving you, what can come along on this magic carpet ride? Because I, you don't want, you don't want three or four months from now things that are riffraff and things that don't serve you riding along with you on that carpet. You really don't want it. You'll be so annoyed if you take it with you and then you're like, oh, if I had just left it back there like first week of January or before even, I wouldn't even have to be dealing with this now. So word to the wise, three of swords, six of cups. Yeah, this is about past love. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like sit here. You know, it can be for everybody's so different. These are big readings. And this can be about past circumstances, past family connections, past any close relationship, really. This is about something that's close to your heart, though, obviously, right? And about that pain that it gave you because it, because it, it pulls you back. It pulled you back from fully expressing yourself. It pulled you back from fully feeling empowered. It pulled you back from feeling you could share of yourself. It pulled you back from being that witty, sarcastic person in it. or whatever it is that you wanted to share, you know, and it, it said, don't do that. Don't do that. It, and maybe even the person wasn't saying you need to do that, but you felt the pressure to change yourself or pull yourself back or be less than so that they would accept you. You felt the pressure to change yourself and morph your attitude in order to, to find acceptance. That's what I'm seeing here with this. Anything popping up in January that wants to knock on your window and say, hey, watch it. Watch it. You'll feel this in your body. You know, that's what I always say. Like, three of swords, six of cups energy together like this. It's that thing of, like, there's a part of you that gets the sugar rush and the hit of, like, yeah. This feels so good. This person's calling me back. This, the job that, that didn't want me now wants me or whatever, you know, the situation could be. There's an initial ego rush, but then there's that icky feeling that kind of settles in the pit of your stomach because you know, you know what it comes with. You know it comes with certain patterns. You know it comes with certain crap. You know it comes with these, these bumps that are more than bumps. They're more than just like we can get, we can workshop this. These are things that are just painful. 
unpleasant to be around. They don't fit with you anymore because you're already writing over here. You're meant to excel past what was holding you. You're meant to keep going. Maybe you're dealing with another stubborn earth sign or, or an Aries. Maybe you are. You might be. That might be who's involved here. Or even a Leo or an Aquarius. But honestly, those energies are much more about how you're moving through the world. And even these are about how you're moving through the world. There's a, there's a quiet steadiness with you Virgos this month that I really like. The Knight of Pentacles is you at your best in some ways. Um, you know, this is you taking that moment, just like looking around, you know, not rushing to the next answer and saying, I'm going to watch what this person does. I'm going to watch what this situation brings me. I'm going to watch myself and notice where I'm feeling good and where I'm feeling in flow and where I'm feeling at ease and where I'm feeling just heavy. I'm going to take a minute. I'm just going to look around. I'm just going to be in observation mode. Do that do that. Because the emperor here is the initiator, the fire starter. Mars is an Aries, man. We are all feeling that. The initiator, the leader, the fire starter, the self-worth knower. This is empowered energy. This is forward focused energy. He is looking straight ahead. There's no backing down. He's holding his own. Anybody who comes into your space and demand something of you or ask something of you is in your space. You get to hold court. You get to hold that territory. You get to decide what that means for you. And honestly, the emperor is about beginning a journey. He represents Aries, and Aries represents the beginning of a journey, the front lines, the opening up of the storybook. If you have the emperor with you, you are being asked to step into a bigger version of yourself. You are being asked to incarnate as that leader in your own life. And here's the thing. The top card is the six of wands. You triumph in the end. You triumph in the end. This is about forward motion. The six of wands is like, yeah, there is a battle back there. But we're looking over here. We're not even looking at that anymore. We're not even we're not even going to go there anymore. We don't need to because we're, we're going toward peace times. We're going towards abundance times. We're going towards times that are about flow and ease and love and joy and playfulness and creativity. That's what we're going for. Any of this other stuff isn't interesting. It's boring. It's boring. You have so many cards that are about your empowerment this month, Virgo. Like so many. It's like you are meant to be empowered in yourself and how you move through the world and how you share of yourself and all your creative gifts. Anything that is trying to suppress that creativity and those creative gifts, anything that's trying to come in and muddle that up, can't come with you. Can't come with you. Okay? I have an affirmation for you for January. So take this with you. Check in with it from time to time. I make decisions and create with ease. My heart leads the way. That's it. Your heart leads the way. And you are meant to be this creative, effervescent person. You are meant to be who you are. Don't let anybody take that away from you. Don't let any, any memories of 2018 take that away from you. You know, it's all in the past. What is the past, right? I love you guys so much. I hope you follow me on Instagram at the Sarah Tarot. I would love to see you over there. Um, I'm also booking sessions. So I'd love to work with you guys. I will leave my website, which is saratarot.com. Um, that's where you can see what my services are and how to book with me and get my calendar. Um, so go check that out as well as, of course, the Your Head readings, which I'm going to leave in the description box. I have had so much fun doing this talk with you guys today. It got more intense than I was even planning. I was like, oh. But you know what? There's this strong core of empowered energy with you guys that is so awesome. Oh, I love it. And I hope you guys have a beautiful beginning to 2019. We are heading into some really new 
really new territory. It's a really different energetic landscape this year. So much is going to be experienced and accomplished. It's going to be wild. Um, I love you guys and I'll see you in February.